Good morning. It's Sunday morning, March 29th, 2020, and this is Center Point Kids Point. Uh, this morning, because you can't come to the building, I'm going to come to you. Here we are. Hopefully, you're in a position where you're able to sit down and spend a few minutes with me as we have our Kids Point lesson today. It'll be a little bit different, but hey, we'll have a good time, and it's always good to get together. I miss all you guys. Looking forward to when we can all get together again. This morning, you can probably see by what I've written on the board our lessons on Nicodemus. Um, as we get started, Nicodemus' story is found in the Gospel of John, which is one of the first, one of the Gospels um, in the Bible, the fourth one out of the first four books of the New Testament. A little bit about Nicodemus before we get started. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and if you've been with me in Kids Point before, you know we talked about Pharisees. They were the people who were in charge of the Jewish religion. They gave um, direction, they gave guidance, they um, gave instruction to the people. Unfortunately, by the time Jesus came, uh, the role of the Pharisees had become a little bit um, changed. Instead of being focused on following God, they had created a lot of rules and regulations and put a lot of pressure on the people to do what they thought was the right thing instead of what God said. So when Jesus came, Jesus said a lot of things that upset the Pharisees because he said the way to get to heaven was to love God and obey him, and they, that people didn't have to follow all of the Jewish um, Pharisees' laws. And this caused a lot of problem with Jesus and this group of Jewish leaders called Pharisees. That sets us up for our story today because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. In John chapter 3, it says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs that you are doing if God isn't with him. Well, it's interesting that we see what Nicodemus has said because here... Jesus has been doing lots of public ministry. He's already come to the place where he's been teaching people about God. He's been sharing God's word. He's been sharing with the people about how to get to heaven and how to obey him. He's already done his first miracle in, the Can in Cana of Galilee where he changed water into wine, which was a really big deal. And people, whoops, <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, and people were very surprised and impressed with that. So Jesus is doing miracles. He's talking to people. He's already called his first disciples. So he has a lot of people who are already following him because people are liking what he's saying. He's saying that you don't have to do all the little detailed rules that the Pharisees have put in place. All you need to do is love God and obey him. Jesus is also spending time with people. He's loving on children. He's sharing God's love with those around him. And so this is making him very, very popular with the regular people, but not necessarily with the Pharisees. So we have Nicodemus, and Nicodemus has now come to Jesus, and he's asked him a question. Now something interesting, I'm not sure if you picked up when we read it out there at the beginning of John, but it said Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Hmm, night. Why do you think he came at night? I thought about it a little bit. I have some thoughts. I wonder what you're thinking, too. So take a second, see what you think. Why do you think Jesus came, or I'm sorry, why do you think Nicodemus came to see Jesus at night? Right. If you were here in the room with me, I'd ask you to share. But since you're not, I'm going to share my thoughts, and we'll see if it's what you were thinking as well. One reason he might have come at night is because he was scared. He might have been afraid that his other Pharisee friends who didn't like Jesus would see him coming to Jesus and say, Ooh, what are you doing, Nicodemus? You're sneaking off to see that Jesus guy. What are you doing? Oh, we don't like you doing that. And he might feel like they would not appreciate or approve of him seeing Jesus. Another idea, he might have come to Jesus at night because he was just really, really busy, and so was Jesus, and that might have been the only time the two of them could get together. We don't know. Maybe, maybe they were just super busy with things going on and that was the best time. Or maybe that was the only time they could have some privacy. 
Jesus was very busy. People were always talking to him and wanting to get his opinion and hear from him. And Nicodemus was a busy man too. So maybe that was just the only time that worked for them. The Bible doesn't tell us, but we do know Jesus came at night. I'm sorry, Nicodemus came at night to see Jesus and the two of them had quite the conversation. So as I already read, Nicodemus says to Jesus, Rabbi, we know you're a great teacher from God because no one could do the miracles that you're doing if God wasn't with him. Well, that seems like a good start. Nicodemus is curious. He's not saying anything mean or ugly. He's just talking to Jesus. He has a sincere question. And Jesus answered just about knocked Nicodemus off his feet. Jesus answered. Here, let me read it to you. His answer, because Nicodemus says, we know you're from God because no one could do what you're doing except if God was with him. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. All right. I love to pretend like I'm in the story. So when I read that account of Jesus and Nicodemus, I'd like to imagine, what if I was sitting there? Maybe I was in the corner of the room or listening through the, through the window. I can imagine Nicodemus saying, what? What? Born again? Jesus, what are you talking about? I can't be born again. And we read that Nicodemus goes on to say, I can't be born again. I'm an old man. What do you want to do? Get all squishy and little and be born like a little baby again? And this is where I just, I have to imagine Jesus kind of chuckles and says, no, Nicodemus, that's not what I mean. This is what I mean. You need to be born again spiritually. Hmm, that's a really big concept. We know what it's like to be born physically. Many of you have little brothers or sisters that have come into your home, or you might have friends or family members who've had babies, and they're so cute and little, and they cry and they burp and they do little things, and they're so sweet, and we just love them so, so much. That's a baby born physically. But being born spiritually is on the inside. It's where our heart changes, and we choose to love and obey God rather than do things that are selfish and for ourselves and disobeying to God. So I just have to imagine Nicodemus is sitting there saying, I don't get it. What in the world are you talking about, Jesus? Born again. So I just see poor little Nicodemus's mind. It's just spinning and spinning. And he's like, I asked such a simple question. I asked if he was from God. And he talks about being a baby. I am so confused. So Jesus had a brilliant answer. He gave Nicodemus an illustration that would help him understand, which is something good teachers use a lot. So Jesus said, Nicodemus, you know about wind, right? Well, by now I'm sure Nicodemus is just thinking, what in the world did I come here for? This Jesus, first he's talking about being born, and I'm an old man, and now he's talking about the wind. But Nicodemus was smart, so he just hung in there with Jesus. Sure, he says, I know about the wind. And Jesus says, can you see the wind? And I imagine Nicodemus says, oh, sure, I see the wind. I see it blow the trees, and sometimes it blows my hair, and maybe makes my robe blow or blows papers off the table. Jesus said, no, 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 no. You're not seeing the wind. Have you seen the wind? And Nicodemus said, hmm, hmm, no. I guess I really haven't seen wind. I've seen what the wind does. I've seen it blow things. I've seen the clouds go. I've seen the sea get rough and bumpy. I've seen the sails blow on the boat. I guess I've never seen the wind. I've only seen what the wind does. And Jesus said, aha, that's exactly what I'm talking about, Nicodemus. Just like you don't see the wind blowing, so you don't see a person who has just been born spiritually. However, just like the wind, when we see its result, things moving, things blowing, things toppling over, we see the result when somebody has been born spiritually. We see a change in their life. So just like when a windstorm comes through and trees are knocked down or um, roofs are damaged or things have been blown away, we can see the change that happens in someone who is born spiritually. When they become a Christian and trust Jesus, we see a change in their lives. And that's what it means to be born again. I kind of imagine Nicodemus sitting there saying, oh, 
I kind of am starting to get it. And then this is a place where there's a verse here in this chapter that you've probably heard. It's like the most famous verse in the whole Bible. It's called John 3.16. I have it right here. In fact, later on when you're done with this uh, lesson, if your folks want to go to Facebook, we have it on there so you could download this and color it yourself. But this is the verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus said that to Nicodemus. When Nicodemus was trying to understand what Jesus was talking about, about being born again, Jesus explained to him that the gift that he gave was coming to earth as a little baby, and that's where we have Christmas. You might remember our Christmas story where Jesus came as a little baby, but he didn't stay a little baby. He grew up, and at the end of his life, he was crucified and he died for us, but he didn't stay dead, and that's that incredible gift that God gave us through Jesus. And that's the gift that Jesus is referring to when he speaks to Nicodemus in this chapter of John. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that's the gift from God through Jesus. And so today, boys and girls, if you have not had a chance or taken the opportunity to pray and ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and accept the gift he gave, I encourage you right now to pray. In fact, Let's do that right now. I'm going to pray a prayer, and if you'd like to pray along with me, that would be great. If you have already asked Jesus into your heart, pray with me anyway. Pray for those who might be listening who would like to ask Jesus into their heart and forgive them. Or you might want to pray and ask Jesus to forgive you for things that you might have done that you know you shouldn't. So let's just take a moment. We're going to talk to Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the gift you give us that we can be born again, just like Jesus explained to Nicodemus. Please forgive us for the things we have done wrong. We accept your forgiveness, and we love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. So, boys and girls, if you would like to let me know, you can email or call or have your folks let me know if you prayed and asked Jesus into your heart. I encourage you, boys and girls, if you want to share this with your parents. Maybe you can go tell them the story about Nicodemus. Maybe they weren't listening very well. Sometimes that happens. You tell them. You tell them the story about Nicodemus. Tell them how he snuck in to see Jesus at night and how he asked Jesus a question and Jesus said the most ridiculously sounding thing to, G to Nicodemus, but then explained to them what Jesus really meant when he told Nicodemus about being born again. Thank you, guys. We will see you next week. Next week is Palm Sunday, so I'm thinking palm branches might be in the story. So if you find a palm branch that isn't too sticky or icky and your parents don't mind you having it nearby, we'll probably have that in our lesson next week, too. So thanks for letting me come and spend some time with you this Sunday morning. Miss you guys. Praying for you. Love from Centerpoint.